Good morning, kiddos. Happy Friday. Because it is Friday, April 24th, we are going to do things a little bit differently today. So I'm going to start by telling you a story about what life might look like for a child in ancient Greece. And you need to turn on your listening ears and listen for objects. Listen for things in this story that you could buy at a market. So listen carefully. I'm going to tell a story about their day. And there might be things that you could have, like a vase or a piece of bread, anything that you could sell in a market you're going to listen for 10 of them. You're going to draw those things. First, you can write some words. Then we'll do a math game with that where you get to go shopping for your own things, okay? So, listen really, really carefully. I, of course, will help you near the end to remember some of the things, but I want you listening for objects, Greek objects, that you could put in a store. And there will be so many, you'll get to choose 10 that you find interesting, okay? Let's start with our characters, though. We are going to have a boy and a girl that we pretend are born into a Greek family. This is Adrian. And when Greeks named their children, they wanted their names to mean something. So Adrian means wealthy, which means that his parents wanted him to grow up and have lots of money. And this is Thea. And Thea means divine gift. So when her parents had her, they thought that she was a gift from the gods. All right, Adrian and Thea. So let's pretend that one morning, oh, they wake up, the stretch. They look down at their beds, which are actually quite fancy. They're decorated with tortoise shells and elephant tusks and elaborate carvings, and they're piled with sheepskins to keep them cozy. So Thea and Adrian are waking up. This is what their house would look like. Oops, one second. Got a lot of pages in this book. This might be what their house would look like, okay? So you can see they have real beds. They might even have lofts. They had strong walls around their buildings. They had running water. So this would be probably a pretty fancy house, okay? And as they put their beds back together, they adjust their chitons. Now, chiton is the fancy name, well, we think it's fancy, for the clothing that the Greeks wore. So if you look, this is what a family might look like dressed in the Greek style. They all wore these draped chitons. And if you look, the, the kids would be shorter so that the kids could run around and play more easily. And then the dads went to about his knees. So ladies were long, dads were about to their knees, and then the kids were short. Okay, so they're all dressed. They've got their chitons on. They go downstairs and they'd go out to their courtyard, which would be like our yards today, sometimes surrounded by the walls of the house and they would actually go up to the altar first. Now, in the Catholic Church, you know the altar is where the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. So this is an important place for sacrifice. In ancient Greece, they were very religious, so they would go downstairs to the altar to thank the gods, whichever gods their family worshiped the most, for another day. Okay, so this would be one of the first tasks. On the way back inside, if the family did not have slaves, Thea would stop at the well, perhaps, unless there was water coming in in the kitchen, which wasn't as often as the baths, okay, and get water for the family. So she might have a bucket, there's something you could sell, a bucket, and they'd bring it inside and get ready for breakfast, okay? Now, when they sit down for breakfast, they might even have fancy cups, and I thought some of you would like to see this cup just because it is so funny. It's a donkey cup, okay? They might be drinking their wine out of that cup. That's what they had for breakfast was bread and wine, okay? They'd usually dip the bread in there because it would be drier and then eat the bread and wine. I also wanted you to see this, this is cool. This is a ring. You could put the ring or the donkey cup in your market. The ring has what's on it called a hippocamp, which is like a mermaid and a horse put together, okay? It's a seahorse with two front feet and the tail of a fish. So it's kind of like a centaur in the water. So they eat their breakfast and now they have playtime. In Greece, they loved to spend their free time doing things that were fun, okay? So we'll talk about school in a little bit, but if they weren't at school, they would be outside playing. And playing could look many different ways. They might be playing a lyre, which is like a harp. Okay, they all learned to play instruments. This was an important part of Greek culture. So if you look, this is her lyre that she's playing. It's like a harp. These ladies here are playing jacks. So if you've ever played jacks where you have the little pokey things that are kind of like snowflakes on the ground and you try to pick them up, they played that in ancient Greece. But instead of playing with our metal jacks or plastic jacks now, they would use perhaps the knee joint of a sheep. 
So they'd use joints from animals and try to pick them up. That was another game they played. So you could have jacks, you could have liars, you could have a top. We've all seen tops that you spin, okay? Or board games. So they might be outside playing, and after the playtime, they might come back inside to have lunch. Now, if the boy, and if we're in Sparta, it could be the girls too, but if the boy went to school, he didn't need a bunch of books, he didn't have crayons, he didn't have all that stuff. The only thing he might have would be this wax scratcher. So they'd have a wax tablet to work on their writing and arithmetic, and they'd use that to scratch into it, okay? So that would be the morning. Then Adrian and Thea would go back inside their house and have lunch, which would look pretty much the same as breakfast, okay? They would have bread and wine, and maybe they'd throw in some olives or figs, which are delicious fruit. Now, for the afternoon, they'd probably go back to their playing, but they might have chores to help mom around the house, unless that family had slaves, and then they'd get to do something else. We're gonna stop for a minute talking about what their day might look like, though, and talk about men and women, boys and girls. So let's just pretend that Thea wanted to go spend some time with her mom. And moms, just like today, some moms, loved jewelry. They love beautiful things. So if Thea was with her mom, she might see this up here, which is called a headdress. It would be something you'd pin to your hair for beauty. She might have these fancy earrings over here or this necklace and medallion, okay? Or she might have perfume, all the lovely things girls enjoy seeing, okay, or having. So she would do that with her mom, potentially. She'd be learning how to take care of the house because taking care of the house was very important, and that might be what the girls do together. Now the boys, it could look two different ways. If the family was rich, if they had a lot of money, the dad might spend a lot of his time at the gymnasium, hanging out, doing exercise, or he might have his friends come over and they would have a special room just for the men and they might just talk, 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 talk. They talk about ideas. What is this? What does it mean? How should we live like that? Okay? So they might be in one of the rooms of their house full of vases and pottery, all kinds of fancy things. You could put all that in your market. Okay? Just sitting around talking. So maybe Adrian would walk in and see his dad and his buddies talking in this fancy room full of fancy things. Or... If a dad wasn't wealthy like that, he might be working. So he might be a fisherman, which means he'd have a boat. You could put a boat or a net in your shop. He might be a shepherd or a farmer, which means you could have sheep or you could have a shepherd's staff in your market or maybe some grain for people to buy, okay? Or he might be a cobbler, which is someone who makes shoes. So you can see right here that this man is working at his table with tools to make shoes and boots. Okay, or he might be a potter and be making things out of clay. Now, when all of that was done, it would be time for dinner. And dinner was the most important meal in ancient Greece, okay? And interestingly, they didn't all have dinner with their family. They would do breakfast and lunch as a family, but dinner was the time to split up and go with their friends. So lots of times the men would be together and the women would be separate, okay? If they were in the same house, the men got to eat first, which maybe is a tradition in your house, men first. I don't know, or maybe you've taken chivalry and you go ladies first, okay? They, um, the men would eat first, then the women, and then the slaves. And their dinner was the fanciest, biggest meal of the day. So they would have eggs, they would have fish, they'd have all the olives and figs and cheese. They would have bread, of course, bread all the time. And if they had vegetables, this is the meal where they'd eat their vegetables. It might be asparagus or cabbage, okay? And then if they were doing dessert, now they didn't have sugar, so they didn't have cakes and cupcakes and cookies and all that, they would have maybe a piece of fruit or a piece of cheese with honey drizzled on it to make it sweet, okay? So now here's your first task. You are going to draw 10 things to put in your imaginary Greek market, 10 things you think people would want to buy. So you're thinking back to the story, you can make fancy beds, you could have sheepskins, you could have chitons, their clothes, you could have shoes or boots or t tools to make shoes and boots. You could have any of their food, bread, wine, eggs, fish, vegetables, okay? You could have the donkey cup, you could have a ring, earrings, necklaces, you could have perfume, you could have the wax stylus, okay? that you would write on at school. You could have, what else did I miss? Oh, the games. You could have a liar. You could have a board game. You could have a top. 
Okay, you could have 10 of those or more if you wish, but 10. So I've started drawing mine. I will, I will stop this and finish, but I will show you my first one. So I made a liar and first graders, you can write your words. Kinders, you can try words if you want, okay? But I'd like my firsties to write words with them. So here's my liar, here's a top, here are some earrings, here's a vase, here's a game, and then I actually made a statue too of a goddess to put on my altar. So I have six. I need to make four more. I'm going to stop the video now so you can go make your 10 and then we'll come back and do our math project with this after this.